left to speak for the friends of Paul is a true order because of his uh, huge, huge credentials. But I'll give it a try, and especially looking after uh, people as eloquent as uh, General Gotema. I begin by commiserating with the family, God and the children, for this loss. Of course, I had the sentiments around, triggered by some of uh, the colleague politicians. But it is well, and I want to assure you that no one, no one wished a poor, uh, such a device. And if we could turn back the hands of the clock of time to save Paul, certainly we would. But it was his time. It was his time. And I think the technical people will explain. That said, I will talk about, I had a speech written, but I won't stick to print. I don't want to be officious. I'll speak about Paul as I knew him. Paul, the human being, the social aspects of how I know him, and a little bit of his official achievements. Paul and I uh, in the UPDF, we are generational. We had our seniors, uh, like Mafandi Saleh here, who mentored us into men, into leaders. And then our turn came. Uh, until actually, of death, I didn't know he was only one year shy of my age. Paul you looked much younger. Boy's face, no lean. There was a time, I think General Kayanja here had a function, and he had Paul on his side. That was the first time my wife was physically seeing her locate. And I remember she asked that, is that guy an athlete? I said, no. I said, why? She said, uh, Paul and maybe General Akara are the typical officer Gentlemen, I said, why? They say, you say, you look at their waistlines. I was about to sign the ghost papers. And I have company in terms of those with rounded waistlines. But take heart. I told you the other day in Kampala that we had a very interesting intake in Tanzania. Intake 39, company commander's course. General Wakasuma reminded me here that she was one of us. And I wanted this youngster to ask members of Intake 39 to stand up for recognition. Starting with the CDF, General Badi, then the Deputy CDF, General Herrero, then the General Mjira, uh, that policeman there called the Brigadier Goloba was also one of us, and Brigadier Jesse, Brigadier Sebo. I saw Matthew here, Matthew Kureme, and uh, Ruhesi, Brigadier Ruhesi. Hello? And the uh, Major General Kayanja and Major General Kashiru, and the uh, Brigadier Sebo. That 
that roof turned the roof upside down. We did well because but we had old spots in Arusha and told him, I want to assure you that we never touched uh, women, but we did all the other things young men do. There was a discotheque which was on the ground in Arusha, and the only people you would see because of their attitude was location homies, the late homies. The rest of us who are short would disappear in the darkness of that daytime discotheque. And then, of course, Barracuda and the places like AICC Club. That lot contributed immensely in feeling the leadership and taking over from our mentors, the General Saleh and his company. And that is the company General Paul kept. We had many interactions as we grew up in leadership, including as young battalion commanders in Congo. That's where I first crossed interacted with him when he was in Bafasende, and when he was there bringing back the boys home. And uh, with thanks over a not particularly tangible area. But he did it, and the boys came home, so to our equipment. And I want to commend him for that exceptional feat as a battalion leader. His inception in leadership. Like I told you in Kampala, starts as a young I.O., but a different kind of I.O., the trained I.O., fighting I.O., and I told you he was the caliber of Brigadier Richard Otto. I don't know if Otto is here. Strive in whatever you do, small way, big way, to leave impact that will outlive you. You may not be as tall as Rocket, but try and not to pass as a shadow. With those few remarks, I want to salute a comrade, friend, general officer who lived a short life, but a very impactful life in Uganda and beyond Uganda. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you.